Hi everybody, this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at Sun Drenched Pro Tour San Diego. I'm here with Tom the Boss Ross, and we're here talking about his deck, Boss Naya. A uh, large number of players are playing this deck this weekend. Got off to something like a 33-7 and seven start through, uh, through Another, four rounds. Yeah, at least four players are 4-0 to start off with it. And so we're through five rounds of the tournament. How are you doing with it? I'm 4-1 and one with it. Okay, and uh, some of the other players playing the deck include LSV, Paulo Vitor Damodorosa. How, how are you uh, building a deck that, uh, you know, LSV's played? LSV did not play with <laughs> Wild Nacatl, one yeah, of the cards it's, it's in this deck. quite a surprise. He did not play with that card in Limited, right? Much less play with it in Constructed. Yeah, I'm sure the world was for sure he was going to play Jace somewhere in his, in his deck. But um, this, this deck put up numbers when we went through the gauntlet. So talk, talk to me a little bit about how you prepared for this event, what, what you were expecting to see, and, and then why you came to this deck. Well, I was probably going to play nine no matter what. This is <laughs> my color. But uh, we played in, uh, in San Jose at uh, Luis Guy Vargas' house for a while, and uh, we had these mock tournaments, and everybody brought their own deck that they would like to play. And um, this, this deck came up to be the favorite uh, of the tournaments. Um, I was playing Bane Slayer, but we had the idea of uh, a Stoneforge Mystic package. To where Behemoth Sledge kind of replaces the Blaine Slayer for okay. like a, a hard to beat creature. So, uh, so let, let, let's get down to the, the nitty gritty of, of what the deck looks like. You're, you're starting out uh, on turn one, say, with a Wild Nacatl. Mm -hmm. uh, walk, walk us through uh, what this deck does. Typical game. Um, yeah. Well, it has six turn one plays um, for accelerants, but it's not necessarily a, you have to go from one to three in a curve. We don't have that many three drops. It's built a have a consistent like four four uh, four drop on turn three kind of, with these and this and we play a lot of land like Terramorphic Expanse the that kind of helps uh, to get to the cattle to three three. Um, our removal package is kind of low, but we felt like we didn't need it because our creatures should be superior to theirs with Behemoth Sledge and and Vassalus Collar. Yeah, now the Stoneforge Mystic's an exciting card. This is you're you're basically telling me that this card single handedly replaced Baneslayer Angel in your Naya deck. Right. Yeah, so, I think it's really good. It's, I and you have it, it'll only get better with time too, as more equipment comes out. Right, it's a card like this. The two equipment cards that you're able to search for are Behemoth Sledge and one of the breakout cards of the tournament, Basilisk Collar. Yeah. So it turns it turns it's like a Naya deck that gets to play with all Vampire Nighthawks. Yeah, I see a lot of people playing Basilisk Collar, but I think this deck can use it the best. It gets the most uh, value out of it, okay. especially after sideboarding. So and we're seeing a lot. And this is sort of, sort of like. The package from the the world's Nyadak that did very yeah, well. Those are the best four drops available to us. That and the Johnny Vengeant. But uh, this deck runs three different toolboxes in it. Namely, this combo uh, has neither Reliquary to fetch up uh, any of the three Madlands. The Sectonic Edge to keep them um, keep them behind a turn, or uh, it's a jury step to give a guy protection mid combat or gets a removal spell with neither Reliquary. And it has Ranger Vios, of course. So Ranger Vios, you get to go get. Your wild nacatls. You get to go get a scoop mob. Mm -hmm. Sometimes bird of paradise. Sometimes double heart. And we have a goblin guide in the sideboard to help Just attack <laughs> planeswalkers as a surprise. Okay. And then uh, I think one of the most uh, exciting elements of this deck actually lurks in the sideboard. Yeah, we're, 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 we already talked about the basilisk collar, but uh, what's more exciting than a basilisk collar equipped to a cunning spark mage? Uh, yeah. This is seems like such a little kid play, right? Like, it works really good. Both cards are, are good by themselves. I bring in Cunning Spark Mage, and it's, it's fine usually in decks that I want to bring in it against because they have a lot of one toughness creatures. Right. But once you get the combo going, it's pretty unbeatable. Right. Be be because Basilisk Collar gives Death Touch, uh, if you put it on a pinger, uh, you know, Cunning Spark Mage or any, anything that's doing one damage to a creature, it's going to kill the creature. Yeah. So you, you can shoot down a Bane Slayer Angel. Pretty much, and you get to, even get to gain a life from the Bachelor Scholar. <laughs> Have you shot down Bane Slayer Angels in this tournament? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I shot, shot down an Emeria Angel, which is good enough. Another, seems, seems pretty good. Some Dauntless Escorts and another Relic Warrior shot down. It's been enough. What, what are the other uh, exciting cards? I noticed you have uh, you you have a suite of you know more equipment and another uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Where are you mm -hmm. bringing these in? Uh, bring in the extra Basilisk Collar and the Stoneforge Mystic whenever I bring in the Cunning Spark Mages. And the uh, Behemoth Sledge is really good against John because they, they have to remove each and every one of your creatures right. to beat you. Okay, you already, you already talked about the extra Goblin Guide in the board which you're bringing in to attack. Yeah, it's common that 
the Jace players will play a Jace and they'll bounce something. Then on my turn, I'll fetch up a, a Goblin Guide with Ranger Vios and attack it. Okay. Uh, right, because there's two counters on the Jace after they bounce something, and the Goblin Guide's just enough to right. finish it off. Uh, Quasali Pride Mage. What are we bringing these in for? Uh, that's against random stuff. It'll draw you monuments. Um, Tally Mind decks. Um, decks with Oblivion Ring and Honor the Pure. Okay. And then uh, I assume that these are for the control decks? Yeah, Dauntless we built the uh, four Dauntless Escort because our, our deck's really bad against Day of Judgment. We, we found that out. It's okay. really it's really easy to beat a Cruel Ultimatum, but it's really hard to beat a Day of Judgment without those. Okay. And then uh, I guess also for the control matchups? Yeah. We have well, uh, a couple Mana Barbs? Yeah, a lot of those control decks with Jace can't really beat a Mana Barbs once it's resolved. So. Okay. So uh, you're 4-1 you're right now. Right. You're going to go draft. And then uh, another draft after that, and you're coming back for five more rounds of standard. If you could script your closing five rounds, like just sort of pick your opponents <laughs> in terms of matchups, what, what would you be looking for? Uh, creature decks. Creature uh, decks that I can bring in the, the Spark Mage combo against uh, Elves and Mono White. You, really, you don't really care what creatures it are, they are? No. My creatures should be better than theirs because of the equipment, and they should be killed by the Spark Mage combo. I'm, I'm just afraid of like uh, getting blown out by Planeswalkers and Day of Judgment and just being too so, far behind. So blue-white control would be a matchup you're not looking for down the stretch of the tournament? I mean, I can beat it, but... It's tough. It's tough sometimes. Sure. Okay. So uh, what, what, what are your goals for this year? I mean, you had, you had a great season last year. You, yeah. uh, you had a breakout performance at Pro Tour Honolulu. Mm -hmm. You had two GP top eights. And then you, you won a Legacy 5K recently. So uh, you're, 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 doing, you're playing some really good magic. What's your goal for 2010? I guess to reach level six, probably probably top eight another pro tour. That'd, that'd be the realistic goals, I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to win them all, of course, but they don't always work out that way. So, I think I, I like my chances. Okay. Well, you're you're in great shape at the first pro tour of the year. Uh, for Tom Ross, this is Brian David Marshall signing off from the tournament center.